This is like the evil step family Cinderella S story. Showed up at the door and just barged in. Welcomed themselves in. Why can't you just do this for Dan? Oh my gosh. If I hear do this for Dan one more time. Do this for Dan because he's my beloved brother. I hate that line so much. Brother. Brother. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Honey Hearts. I'm Sandra. And I'm V. And today we have a different format. I have one really long story for you guys, but it's a good one. Wow. So buckle up because this is going to be a wild ride. Buckling in. So today's story is from r slash entitled people titled parents told my brother that he could take my house and I could just live in the camper in the backyard because I'm single and he has a wife and kids. Oh, that's a, oh, okay. Are you ready for this? I don't think I am, but we're heading there anyway. <laughs> Let's go. I'll warn everyone here that this is going to be very long. I'm a single man in my early 30s. I've got a brother who's 29 and he's already got four kids now. He had his first at 22 and the second followed a year later, then the third two years after that. And the fourth is the most recently born a couple months ago. His wife, my sister-in-law, and I do not get along as she always likes to try to get a rise out of me by acting superior. Then turns into an extreme, self-victimizing drama queen if I retaliated against her in any way. She can cry in an instant and can put on an extremely convincing show to get sympathy from just about anyone. My parents and brother absolutely adore her even though they know exactly how she really is and just don't care. She is very good looking. I'll give her that, but she's so awful that I could never be attracted to her. She also refuses to get any sort of job, even though she has a college degree and my mother willingly helps with the kids all day. So their finances are entirely dependent on my brother. This also means they can't afford to live anywhere but my parents' house, and privacy is a bit of an issue with all of them under one roof in a three-bedroom house that was built in the 60s. So OP just painted a picture. Mm -hmm. He has his brother, his sister, and I think there are four kids living with their parents. That sounds so chaotic. It's a crowded household. So moving on. Growing up, my younger brother was also the obvious favorite. We're three years apart in age, but he developed a superiority complex because I was badly punished if I retaliated against his antics in any way back then. It was obvious my parents cared for him a lot more because he got the lion's share of everything unless people caught them out on it, which did happen a fair bit by other members of the family, which is why my parents packed us all up and moved us about 150 miles away from them. So they generally only would only see us on holidays since it was a three hour drive. My brother got physically abusive towards me on a number of occasions, flirted relentlessly with my first girlfriend to the point she broke up with me and laughed at any misfortune. And my parents just told me to suck it up whenever I was upset about it. I only got equal treatment when my parents wanted to keep up appearances. I admit it was rather funny to see the looks on their faces whenever they had to treat me equal to my brother on birthdays and Christmas because other people were present. We had relatives that were very nosy and loved gossiping drama. So my parents did their best to hide what was really going on and threatened to take all my stuff away if I didn't keep my mouth shut. If anything, it just made my parents celebrate more when I turned 18 and moved out because it meant they no longer had to provide for me. I wasn't even done with high school yet when I moved out, but couch surfing was far better than living with them. I was low contact ever since leaving home. They didn't even show up for my high school graduation, but I really didn't care. From that point on, I would usually only see my parents and brother on holidays like the rest of the family. So OP paints a picture of his family dynamics so far. Um, are, are, are they sure? Is OP sure that he's their biological firstborn right? son? It gives you like maybe he's adopted vibes. Yeah, or, or something horrible. Like there must be some reason, but it seems like they've been treating him like this for years. Yeah. The start of the 2020 pandemic was not kind to me. I lost my job and couldn't renew the lease on my condo because my roommate also lost his job and neither of us could afford the place on unemployment money. It was a rented two-bedroom condo that I really loved 
as the lease was ending, my roommate left early to move back in with relatives, and I had to sell nearly all my stuff because I was soon going to be homeless if I didn't downsize to an extreme. I really shouldn't have rented a place that was so expensive, but I liked living in the high life. Until that life wasn't kind to me, and I realized I should have been living somewhere far cheaper so I could have saved more money to fall back on. But I had a plan. I own a truck simply for the fact that I've always loved trucks, so I found a $1,000 camper in a good shape and put it on my truck just so that I could live out of it for a while. It was supposed to be temporary, but I ended up living out of it far longer than I ever thought. I originally was hoping to be able to live out of the camper at my parents' house, where my brothers and his family still reside in as well. But when I asked my parents to let me live for a while, they told me they had a full house and didn't want me there. Plus, we hadn't exactly gotten along in the past decade. They said they'd only agree to let me park my camper there if I paid them basically what it'd cost to rent an apartment in my area. That was way too much just to park my camper. I was jobless and trying to save as much of my unemployment money as I could until I could find a new job. I may as well be living in an apartment with that rent price they were asking. My parents called my camper an eyesore and told me to take a hike since we couldn't come to an agreement and sister-in-law thought it was absolutely hilarious. I had to live in a camper. My brother joined her in pointing at and mocking me while calling me a homeless bum. That's so nasty. This is like the evil step family Cinderella S story. But it's OP's direct family. Yeah. It's his immediate family, like his mom, his dad, <sighs> his brother, who are pointing fingers at him and telling him to get lost. I don't like them. I parked my truck slash camper in a store parking lot to sleep on the first night that I had nowhere else to go. I felt scared out of my mind that someone might try to break in. Suffice to say, I didn't sleep well that night. There was nowhere else I could go as any other relatives that owned houses were fairly far away and all my friends were all apartment people. And I was pretty attached to my area as well, so I didn't want to just leave. I'd also had my mail forwarded to a friend's apartment. It was the only way I could still get my mail anymore. Oh. Finding a stable place to park was pretty difficult. I went looking around to try and find a job similar to my old one. It took months of living the nomadic camper life. In the meantime, I had to deal with a lot. Everything from beggars and drug addicts to people demanding I leave because my camper was an eyesore. At one point, someone who told me to move claimed to be with an HOA. I wasn't even parked on the street with houses. I moved my camper away just to avoid the trouble. In order to have a steady supply of electricity, I learned to use a long extension cord to plug in anywhere I could to recharge my camper batteries. This meant sneaking around and plugging into an outside outlet of a random building while parked on a street. I know that's a crummy thing to do, but I had to keep my batteries charged so my refrigerator would stay cold. I had a small solar power bank for recharging my phone, but I didn't have anything like a generator, so I did what I had to do. After months of living like that, I finally managed to get a new job. I had to move to a neighboring city to find a job that didn't involve retail. I was still getting unemployment money, but I had no stable place to live while receiving it, and I didn't want to still be jobless when it ran out. Plus, I was bored out of my mind. I had little else to do but read, watch movies on a small portable DVD player, use my phone or laptop, and keep note of where I could park and what local public bathrooms I could use. I kind of envied the Japanese having public bathhouses. We could really use stuff like that over here. This sounds so sad. He's living like a nomad in a city where he has family. That's rough. Like... (sighs) Okay, trying to figure out where you can get like, your electricity. I mean, oh, I can't I agree with the methods. He went about it, but yeah. it seems like he had to do what he had to do. Just to keep oh. his fridge on, just to keep it, his food cold. I feel like he's going through so much that he shouldn't have to do it if his family would only let him park at their house. That's all he wanted. He just wanted to park, but they were going to charge him rent to park. Even if they said no? Do you really need to be laughing at him, mocking mm-hmm. him and all of that? That's yeah, just uncalled they're, they're for. they're so mean about it. When I finally landed a new job, I practically lived in the back lot of the building by the warehouse in old employee parking spaces literally no one else seemed to bother using because they were so far in the back that the area was borderline forgotten. My boss slash company owner actually liked this arrangement because I was willingly available to take any shift I could 
so long as I had enough sleep. He even let me take the camper off my truck and set it up in one of those spaces so I could drive around without it. Not exactly sure if this was legal, but no one bothered us about it. The entire time I lived back there, I didn't have to deal with many trespassers. There were a few, but the security guards escorted them out. I was pretty much on call almost all the time when they needed me and was working virtually every day of the week. My boss let me plug my camper into the building for power and water, and I paid a small amount of rent by working for free on Sundays when no one else was in the office but the janitor and security guard. Beyond that, I usually had to shower at a friend's apartment or at my local gym as the camper didn't have a shower in it. I had a key to the warehouse and could go in to use the bathroom there at any hour. I was even on first name basis with the night security guard. The camper was easy to heat in the winter with a small electric heater. Summers were not fun though. The camper didn't have AC so I had to get used to portable air conditioner just to make it bearable. I made a lot of overtime pay. So it's looking up. Yeah, I feel like there's a silver lining here. There is. And hands-on learned some new skills from other employees. Eventually, midway into this year, I landed a better position in the company as a supervisor and started making a better salary than my old job. That's when I decided I wanted a house. The scare I'd gotten from losing my condo made me realize I needed something much more stable for a long term. I looked around for something close to my work and just two miles away found a three-bedroom manufactured home on a small property but I managed to get it for 10K less than the asking price somehow. I used nearly my entire savings for a down payment and got approved for a home loan. I finally didn't have to live in a camper anymore. There was enough space for me to back my truck in behind the house to take the camper off to set it up in the backyard. So I put it there as its own little building just in case I want to use it again. We got a house. Wow, that is a big jump from Mm -hmm. nearly homeless to homeowner okay do you think that you would be able to have that type of grit to just like drive your your camper from parking lot to parking lot until you found a job I I think uh, it's hard to say that sounds tough yeah and I guess if you have to do it you have to just go for it Mm -hmm. although a part of me is wondering if I'm a little worried for OP because I know this is you mentioned a long story I'm a little bit worried for him because, okay, so he's been purely nomadic for a while and now he's jumping straight into home ownership, which I know has its own troubles. Yeah. So a little concerned for him, but hopeful. Overall, he sounds very responsible. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure after living in a camper for so long, I think he won't have too much trouble being a homeowner, but there's other concerns. Oh, When I was fully settled in the house, I was dumb enough to brag about it on my book of faces. On Facebook? Yeah. (laughs) My family saw the post and that's where the shit really starts. After a few weeks, my parents and brother along with his family came to visit completely unannounced to have a tour of my home. I knew they would come knocking. I didn't even give them my address. So how they found out where I live, I still don't know. None of my friends have fessed up and no prior family members visited me before that so i wonder if they stalked me at work and followed me home or something it really wouldn't surprise me once i opened the door they practically all shoved their way in like a rambunctious tourist then just started making themselves at home they all kept poking around and sister-in-law had this creepy smirk that she was repeatedly flashing me and it was only later that i figured out why and it made me madder than a bull on steroids that just got stung by a hornet. <laughs> the visual of that. My parents were constantly talking about how I've got so much extra space now. And it's too much for someone like me who has no wife or kids. Sure, not now, but maybe someday. And my brother kept remarking about how there were more space than our parents' house. And my house was closer to his job too. Red flags all around, I know. Why didn't he just kick him out? I would have kicked him out right away. Uh, you know, it's that like nice guy kind of. It's like, oh, I can kick them out. They're my family. No, know? kick them out. They kicked him out. They did. They kicked them not even out of the house, out of the freaking p- like parking, parking yeah. area. Eventually, my brother asked me to speak privately. 
Everyone else suddenly left the room and piled out onto the front porch. That's what finally made me realize they'd planned something. My brother, let's call him Dan for the sake of simplicity, said the house was too much for me alone, and I should let him move in with his family because his wife is pregnant with kid number four, and my house is much closer to his job. He pointed out that I already have the camper, so I could just live in that outside while they live in the main house. And I'd like to point out that Dan never once spoke of offering rent. Mind you, he's got a good job. He also started talking about how there would be changes and even curfews, and that I couldn't just walk in at any time without prior notice. If it weren't my brother, I'd think the person I was talking to had lost their mind. But Dan lost his marbles long ago thanks to our parents treating him like he was the center of the world. I tried to speak, but he kept talking over me as if I had no say in the matter. There was no way in hell I'd rent my house or parts of my house to him. Other people, maybe, just so I can pay the mortgage off more easily, but certainly not him or his nasty wife. The audacity. What do you think of that I, plan? No. Plan? Request? I don't, I don't, demand? Demand? <laughs> I don't know whether to be... I, I'm in a mix between flabbergasted and also just shock at the audacity. They really just showed up at the door and just barged in welcome themselves in and then all of a sudden they're like this is too much space for you who has no wife or kids how Give dare they say that to him yeah and then now his brother's like so i should have it and by the way you can't come in if we're gonna do this you can't come in whenever you want there's gonna be <laughs> when curfews. we're gonna do this you mean the way he says it yeah i don't like the entire the tone it's not even a request it's literally i'm doing you a favor because you don't need this. I do. Like so how, give it to me. How much of a slap in the face it is for him to say, you can since you have the camper, you can just live in the camper outside and we'll take the main house. You've been doing that anyway. Why not just continue it? As if OP didn't just work his butt off to afford this house because he was living in the camper. You know, usually people would feel proud or happy for their family members or even their friend or even a stranger. You'll read a wholesome post like this of how someone made it out and you'll be happy for them, but not his own family. You know, this reminds me of um, this sound on TikTok. Which it's one? The one where like a cat barges into someone's apartment and they're like, ooh, this is nice. Yeah. This is nice. <laughs> Yeah. It's just like that. But they are not a cute cat coming in. No. Ugh. Mm. Okay, moving on. Uh, please tell me OP put some in his place. Please. please. It's a little hard when it's family. No. Put them in. This is not family. These these people are thieves. Yeah, They're family. thieves. Thieves. <laughs> I've heard of this exact kind of situation in videos online many times. And never once did I think I'd actually live it because I thought it so ludicrous. But my parents, brother, and sister-in-law do all fit the bill for a bunch of narcissistic entitled citizens. So I picked up my phone and set it to start recording, then just held onto it. Dan didn't even seem to care or notice that I'd done this and just sat there with his arms waving around while talking about all the reasons of why he needed my house. Then went from saying that to acting like it was a done deal and trying to reach at his hand to shake mine. That's when I finally showed my backbone and said, hell no. And I said it loud enough that Dan stumbled backward for a second. I'd rarely ever raise my voice to him on that level because I was punished by our parents whenever I did. But this was my house, not theirs. My spine can be as shiny as it wants here. I stood up and then told him my house was not up for grabs. And acting like I'll let him move in just because they want it won't make it happen. I bought my house for me and it's not my fault he keeps having more kids and has to keep living with our parents because he can't afford to move out. Dan got as physically close to me as he could without actually touching me and said that I didn't deserve the house and he needed a better place for his family to live. I laughed back in his face and said that was total BS because I worked hard to be able to buy my house. Of course I deserved it. Dan started yelling that I have no wife or kids and I don't need all the space. So I may as well give it to him. I said, I'm not giving him anything and he never even offered to pay me rent. If I let him move in, I'd still be covering the entire mortgage on my house without even being able to live in my own house. Then Dan told me that he shouldn't have to pay rent because 
his family would comes first. And our parents said I was going to do this and that I will. I yelled as if their word was law or something and told Dan that they did not have the right or power to give my house to him. Then right on cue, my parents and sister-in-law barged back in through the front door and surrounded me to try and force me to agree. This is straight up bullying here. These people are crazy. No, they're thieves. I'm mm, I'm now a hundred no a hundred fifty percent certain. Oh. They are thieves. I just I just they plot out a robbery in pure, in daylight. No shame to their own flesh and blood. Mm. Oh, that, that, the tea is hot. <laughs> I just needed that. <laughs> I am so livid that. Someone else is coming to your house and saying, you don't deserve this house. Like, who who are you to say that to the homeowner? You know, by the brother's logic then, based on everything he's saying, every person who is married and has a spouse and has a kid is entitled to a free house. They can just walk in whoever's home and just go, it's mine now. That's go to the not backyard. how it works. Brother. Brother, you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. Moving on. There's more? There's more. How can this be? This is part worse? one. This so is part it, one. It gets worse. Okay. We're almost at the end of part one. There was a lot of fighting, but to sum it up from this point on, I heard the line, just do it for Dan, way more times than I can remember. In the fight, I told them all they don't have a say in my life or my house and to get out before I call the cops. Sister-in-law screamed the loudest at me about how she was pregnant again and I can't do this to her. I said I did nothing to her. She just assumed she could take and take from me like I would just allow it. I had no obligation to her or her family. Then I called her a stuck-up bee who never had any respect for me so I don't care what she thinks or how many kids she has. I have no sympathy for her. She won't be living in my house. Well, that made her angry enough to attack me. She got in one good hit on my face and let her, and tried to do more, but my brother held her back, kicking and screaming. She kept demanding he let her go so she could scratch my eyes out. I hope the cops are coming. This is, this is, a, it's a crime. The phone I was holding recorded pretty much everything, so I held it up and said I was going to call the police if they didn't leave right away. My parents told Dan they were leaving. Then my mother said that I had a week to come to my senses. I told her I won't be and to not come back. Then I told sister-in-law that my phone recorded everything and if she tries anything, I'll press charges for assault. She screamed at me and then stormed out loudly, crying with her face in her hands. My mother was the last out the door and said that I better do this for Dan and sister-in-law. I responded by telling her I won't be. That's I would break all contact. No family relationships here. I sense no love or affection. That's it. That's the end of part one. I, I hope part two is him going, I went to seek legal advice on how to press charges on, you know. What I don't agree with is OP is saying, if you come back, then I'll press charges. I think you need to press charges now. Now. Yeah. I mean, they've already welcomed themselves, marched themselves in his home, stalked him to find out where it was, threatened yeah. him, beat him, literally. Like they, What else are you waiting for? They tried so many tactics all in one visit. First, they barged in. They complimented. Oh, this is nice. You have so much space. Then they kind of guilted him. Oh, I'm pregnant and I need more space. They tried to gaslight him. You don't need this. You don't even have a wife or kids. Yeah. They and really then, went through a checklist. And yeah, went, and yep, then now yep. it's literally harassment and assault. Press charges now. Please tell me part two is about him pressing charges. Before we get to part two, let's cover a comment. The comment says, I would get an order of protection against the sister-in-law. I would also invest in security cameras and upgrade the locks. Maybe Ooh. even invest in a big dog to act as a guard dog for the property. I like that. That way, when they return, you have proof of trespassing. Yep. I love that. Yeah, security cameras. Mm -hmm. Even the guard dog. <sighs> I'm worried for Opie. I think he needs to worry about protecting himself. It sounds like right a now. safety concern. Yeah. Not even like family drama. This is pure safety concern. Hey guys, so before we move on to part two, just a reminder to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We're trying to get to 5,000 subscribers, so please click subscribe. 
So we're back and we're moving on to part two of this wild story. Are you ready? No, but, but hit me with it anyway. Here we go. So part two. As I stated in the first half of my post, many will find this unbelievable and long. But anyway, I do not blame anyone who caused BS. I would too if I was reading this. So OP is calling out anyone who thinks this is made up. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Does it sound like it could be made up? Like a made up story? I mean, of all the movies and series we watch, yes, it could be. But the amount of emotional anger and the length and the kind of rage I feel... It, it feels like it comes from a raw place. Yeah. So, I mean, if someone made this up, then kudos to OP for being such a Good great writer. storyteller. <laughs> yeah. But I, I feel like it's real. I, I think there's truth to this. I, even if it's not, like on the off chance that it's not, then at least we have a good story. But I don't doubt that other people have not encountered yeah. this similar kind of experience. Even to the degree of just having a sibling that is favored, right? Mm -hmm. And then like heavily favored too. Yeah. Or even family that don't treat you like family. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of, that of that out there. So you guys can take what you want from the story. So moving on. After I kicked my parents, brother, and sister-in-law out for trying to force me to hand over my new house to my brother, I immediately went to my social media and told the story to the whole family. It spread pretty fast, but you won't find it now because it all got deleted some time ago and I put my own profile on private. I posted about it because I knew that the first thing my family would do when they got home is try to twist the event to make me the villain. And I was exactly right. Man, it sucks that a family does that. I mean, do, maybe they just have too much free time. I mean, do you, why do you have this much time and energy to play the villain? Yeah. Or in their case, to play the victim. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But I had about an hour to get started before them. And I had video evidence to back up my story about what they've done. No, I don't plan on showing the video here, so don't ask. Oh, oh I, I kind of want to see it. I wanted to see it. Being preemptive worked because I got a fair number of family members on my side right away. My parents, brother, and sister-in-law must have been all set to write their own posts, but it was too late. So they didn't even bother trying to lie much. My parents, Dan, and sister-in-law had a few flying monkeys supporting them, but not much else. Plenty of others knew how entitled they already were. So what happened was something they all quickly understood and accepted. There is one person in particular that called me. I don't know who they were, but they ranted at me that I was a horrible brother and I needed to make way for a real family man. What? I just ended the call and blocked the number. This didn't repeat. That's the right course of action. Too many times I see OPs going, mm, let me try and reason. Let me try and change their mind. Why do they think this way? No. You just can't block. try to reason. Yeah. Yeah. Block. At some point, you just need a block for your own sanity. Yeah. The week went by and my parents showed up with Dan at my front porch just like they said they would in their prior ultimatum. They showed up again. They rang my doorbell like crazy and also pounded on the door until I finally answered. I opened it just a crack and they tried to shove their way in again, but I'd installed a couple of latch chains. Oh, I like that. A couple of latch chains that prevented it and even braced my body against the door for good measure. Wow. Why even open the door? I wouldn't even open the door at that point. My father and brother demanded I let them in. Just because you demand something doesn't mean you're going to get it. <laughs> but I said I was recording everything on camera and would call the police if they tried to force their way in again. My mother calmed them down and then in her most sickly sweet tone asked me if I was ready to let my brother move in. Well, well, excuse me while I puke. Oh. I told oh. her and the rest of them to F off and never come back. My mother put on the crocodile tears and asked me why I can't just do this for Dan because he's my beloved brother. I laughed and then bluntly said I do not love him as a brother because he treated me like crap for years and they only encouraged him to do so. They are terrible parents and he is a terrible brother. Then told them to leave or I'd be calling police ASAP. They also left surprisingly easy apart from my mother's loud crying and the others giving me dirty looks. 
One could say making them leave was sus suspiciously easy. I thought the whole mess was over, but I guess I should have taken them more naive. seriously because they had other stupid plans. I Naive. Naive. Call the freaking cops. You can't just say, go away and expect them to actually go away and disappear from your life. I think this is when pressing charges the first time around would have came in handy. I came home later that week on Friday evening to find a moving truck and my brother's minivan parked no. in my driveway. No. It was Dan and his family there moving stuff in. He just waved to me with a crap-eating grin when I saw him. I was furious and told him and the rest of the family to stop. But sister-in-law smugly said to me that, like it or not, they were moving in. And then in the most fake way, while tilting her head and puckering her lips, she said that it was okay because my mommy allowed it. Um, how are they going to get through the front door? That's like a, she's a different type of evil. And I should always listen to what my mommy tells me. I see it with rage just hearing those words and looking at her smug bee face. So locked myself in my truck to call the cops right away. When they realized what, what, what I was doing, sister-in-law started pounding on my window and yelling at me to stop and that I can't do this to her because she and Dan need a house. And she cried, why can't you just do this for Dan? I responded with, F Dan, it's my damn house, not his. Then she threatened to key the side of my truck unless I stopped calling the police, all of which the 911 operator heard thanks to the window being slightly open. Yes. I told sister-in-law if she damaged my truck, I'd sue her and she was smart enough to retreat. Can I call a cycle? Like oh, a, complete cycle. Like a cycle B right here. Unhinged behavior. Just completely unhinged. I knew the story was crazy when I when I brought it up, but I forgot how crazy it was. I don't know how poor OP. I mean, he, he probably wasn't sleeping well in the camper previously, but now within his own house, he has to worry about his safety from his own biological family. And uh, I don't know. They just they just really showed up with the whole moving truck. Who does that? Well, I guess they do, but how are they able to move things in then? Because wouldn't the house have been locked? That's what I'm saying. Or what do you, I guess they thought that, oh, look, we have the moving truck. We have all our stuff here. You have to let us in. Unless I bet they're they going to pressure in. him. Unless they broke into the house. Well, were they already moving stuff in or were they about to? I think they said they were moving stuff in. Did they break in his door? When the police arrived, Dan and sister-in-law, along with their kids, had locked themselves in my house. So, so they, they broke were, in his they home? They broke in. I told cops what had happened as well as showing them my new driver's license that had my current address on it. Then when we went to my front door, I saw that they changed the lock and the old lock was laying on the porch with the center of it drilled out and the drill they used was laying right next to it. They are crazy. With a complete Harbor Freight drill bit set. Could they have been any more stupid leaving evidence out like that? I pointed out the broken lock and drill, then gave the police a rundown on all the events that happened prior. Wow, they really, they really, this is. I mean, at least they're not is, that smart. Yeah. <laughs> at least they're not that smart. Not that smart, just entitled and delulu. And crazy. And crazy and psycho. Yeah. Oh, that, I mean, that I mix hate, right there. I hate to call a family all these names, but it's just really unhinged behavior. I wonder what the kids feel about it because, oh my goodness, I forgot these they, people are they parents. Have three kids and then a fourth one coming along. I feel bad for their kids already. If these they're, are your parents. They're so confused. Well, I guess Dan called her parents over at some point after I arrived home because they showed up while I was talking to the cops. My parents immediately lied and started saying that I'd agreed to rent my house to my brother and his family. Dan didn't even offer to pay rent. I said that was an easily provable lie one way or another, so Dan and sister-in-law finally came out of my house with some papers in hand. They both looked super smug, like they'd somehow outsmarted me. They'd actually drawn up and printed out a fake rental agreement, but my signature was not on it. 
There was one, but it looked nothing like my handwriting. I don't think any of them have ever actually seen my signature, so that was incredibly stupid on their part. I told my parents and Dan that was stupidly blatant fraud, and if the cops investigated, they'd easily figure that out, and I don't think going to jail and court would do them any good. I could even make Dan lose his job, which is his only means of providing for his family. I also said I would get a lawyer and sue for damages if anything of mine was lost, stolen, or broken. And I'd call CPS too for good measure. Dan went white and looked really scared when I said all that, but my mother got between us and finally doubled down about how I should just do this for Dan. Oh my gosh. If I hear do this for Dan one more time from mom's mouth, I swear. Seriously? She... She's probably wearing a do it for Dan like t-shirt every she single day. Hat. She probably has a hat full. That Dan's says number it. one fan. So I should just do this for Dan and live in the damn camper so they can finally have a family home to themselves. I yelled at her that if she thought it was such a good idea, she could do it for Dan herself and let Dan have her house to himself instead. That's true. Mom, you love, you love brothers so much. Why don't you go and uh, sleep in the yard with a camper? Oh, but you can't park the camper there. It's an eyesore. So, Mom, I guess you'll have to move out of your house. The cops separa separated my mother from me, and I said I wanted them all out right now, or I'll press charges. I stated in a shout about how they drilled out my front door lock to break in. The lease papers were obvious fakes. They'd badly forged my signature, and I have recorded video of sister-in-law attacking me. Those are felonies I could F over their lives with if I wanted. And if they didn't leave, that's exactly what I'd do. The only reason I hadn't already was for the sake of Dan's kids. Okay, I kind of get it. But still. Would you have held back for the sake of Dan's kids? No, for the sake of Dan's kids, I would not have held back. That's because their behavior is going to, well, it, it's not going to. It probably actively is. That's how he acts. Well, that's how Dan and wife acts. Imagine what they're teaching their kids and imagine what the kids are going to learn from this event. It's probably that, like so much stress, you know, because right now at their age, they can't comprehend what's right or wrong. Well, do we know how old the kids are? Or are they young? They're young. No, I would do it for the kids. Because if you can't, if your parents are actively out here threatening your uncle for the home, that's can't be a healthy environment for the kids anyway yeah oh it's so sad oh my goodness so they have one chance to get the f out the moment my parents heard that i think it finally clicked that they could not force me to do it for dan my mother surrendered and said she'd put an end to this then she went over to sister-in-law and spoke with her quietly for a minute while my father spoke to dan Sister-in-law instantly started loudly crying and ripping up the fake rental papers into tiny bits and tossing them like confetti, only to have an officer tell them to pick up the bits of paper or he'd cite them for littering. Yes, I love it. Thank you, that officer. Comedic. Thank you, officer. Both of the cops at this point had the, I don't get paid enough for this, looks on their faces. Dan had to start telling his kids to load their stuff back into the moving truck. The kids were all crying and the eldest was sobbing that he won't get his own room now. Sister-in-law and Dan gathered their kids up to try and make one last pathetic attempt to guilt me with the sad family routine. So I just imagine them like huddled in a circle like, oh, no, we can't have this house. Shame on the parents. Okay, I'm even more like mm, foot down, hammer down on OP's decisions. I feel like they're kind of using the kids to get their way. Definitely. And they're teaching the kids the worst things ever. If you cry about it enough, you can make anyone do whatever you want. That uh, is not the life lesson here. That's a terrible lesson because that will come back and just slap them back in their faces when they grow up. Even you can't, worse, breaking the law? Yes. It's okay to break the law and cry about it because you'll be fine. You know where they all gather together in a sort of group hug while... All facing one direction. That's exactly That's what, what I imagined. <laughs> I swear, I think they'd practice it beforehand. All the kids had the same pleading look with quivering mouths. Sister-in-law kept rubbing her pregnant belly and tilting her head to look like a sad puppy. And my brother just made the saddest face he possibly could and said, Please don't do this. We need to be able to live here. But I didn't falter and told him to keep packing. 
All the kids and sister-in-law turned the crying up to 11, and Dan yelled at me, Are you satisfied with yourself? You've denied us a home because you're too selfish to share and help out family. They're not even homeless. That's true. They have a place to stay. I think sister-in-law needs to start working even if she is pregnant. Yeah, if money is the issue, then sorry. That's, yeah. You made the choice to have kids. Like, so. You can't just take away from someone else's hard work. I hate it when people use kids and then wield that as if that's a weapon to get whatever they want. I need to have this because I'm pregnant. Oh, you can't do this to me. I'm pregnant. I hate that. Yeah. I ended up laughing like a maniac and retorting that what he was trying to do was taking, not sharing. And no amount of crying will make me let his family move in because he's no brother of mine anymore. He's just an entitled prick who thinks he can take whatever he wants from me like when we were kids. Dan started F-bombing me until the cops told him to cool it or he'd be in cuffs regardless if I wanted to press charges. He sucked in his lips and looked like a mix of afraid and supremely pissed off. I asked the cops if they could stick around until my parents, brother, and sister-in-law had all left. And they said they had no intention of going anywhere until this had been resolved. Oh, that's good. In fact, in the next few minutes, two cops became four as more drove in for whatever reason. That gave my parents some extra incentive to get moving. I made Dan give me the keys to the new lock he'd put on my front door. Though I got another lock the next day anyway because I didn't know if he had copies of the keys or not. He was really reluctant to hand them over. Then, instead of handing them to me, he actually threw them down the street and into a storm drain while saying to go get them myself. But one of the cops scolded him for that and made him go get them. <laughs> I like that. He had to pull the grate off just to get at them, and he got pretty dirty in the process. When he got the keys back, he just grumbled, then slammed them down into my hand. I then told them all to leave and never come back. My mother said I'd be disowned for this, as if that were some kind of threat to me, and I voiced that to them. My mother just started crying and walking away. My father just stood there looking like he wanted to hit me. And Dan just held his kids in defeat. Oh, and sister-in-law was off having a tantrum in front of my lawn. Soon enough, they all formed a line, handing out boxes and got their stuff out of my house. Nothing had been unpacked yet, so it was all taken out pretty quickly. But while doing it, my mother kept saying it wasn't too late. And I could still... Say it with me. Do it for Dan. Ah, stop doing it for Dan. Several times. Each time trying to bargain more and more to try to make me change my mind. She said that Dan could pay me rent if I let them stay. And when that didn't work, she said I could move back in with them to let Dan rent my house so I wouldn't have to share the building. I told her to shut up and keep packing boxes because I don't want Dan or his family around. I don't want his money and I certainly don't want to live with him or my parents ever again after the way they treated me when I was a kid. Sister-in-law ended up having another tantrum. Seems like she's just having tantrums. Is she like five? You know... And she's a mother? Ugh. Some people should not be parents. I'm sorry. I don't want to be mean, but I don't think she's setting a great example for them. I just... The, the victims here besides OP are the kids who are witnessing this behavior and are going to be growing up with this behavior. And thinking that it's okay. Oh my gosh. Like they're going to be entitled adults. Norm, oh my goodness. Entitled and like maybe even abusive. From how Dan and I think family is very abusive. And sister in law, yeah. yeah, they just they're so ready to attack OP physically. I can't believe. Okay, are they? They must be delusional. Because why on earth would anyone in their right mind give up their nice, new, newly purchased home to go live with the parents who abused them just so their abusive brother and his family can move into their own home? What 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 was this? logic here the logic do it for dan i hate that line so much do it for dan well i'd like to see mom and dad go do it for dan i know sister-in-law ended ended up having another tantrum after hearing that and threw a box down then sat on the ground to have a pity party because she didn't want to go back to sharing a house with my parents and she just sat looking angry slash sad there until everyone else was finished she didn't want to get up when it was time to leave. Oh, poor thing. 
poor, poor, poor. Oh no, I can't get okay. the free house. I had to look over to make sure you were being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> they finally got everything out of the house and into the truck. So before they left, I laid into my parents one last time about all the stuff they put me through growing up. And with four cops being right there, they couldn't do much other than stand there and take it for once. I called them out on so many things that happened and even pointed out how they couldn't just do something nice for me, like letting me stay over with my camper when I was homeless and trying to get back on my feet. How they let Dana's sister-in-law ridicule me and call me a bum. Well, who's the bum now? They wanted to kick me out of my own house so Dan could stay in it for free of charge. Yet, when I needed a place to go, they wanted to gouge me just to park my camper when they knew I was out of the job. There were more extremely judgmental stares from the cops when I said all that. So I put my parents on the spot one more time and asked them what I ever did other than being born to deserve being treated so badly. Because when I finally have a bit of success in life, they wanted to snatch it away from me for their favorite child since they'd rather give everything to Dan and have nothing for myself. I bought my house using the money I earned. I owed them nothing and I won't be asking anything from them ever again because clearly I will never be anything more than a doormat or a cash cow in their eyes. Opie really laid it into his parents. I'm so happy to see that. We rarely get a kind of retaliation from OP in these types of situations and stories. So I'm really glad to see that. Although you know what? It's funny to me. The parents are definitely the type of people who are, I, I, do you call them local bullies? They'll bully people in their own homes or in their own circles, people who they think are weaker than them, uh, but in front of real authority or anyone who's, they can't, they feel like they don't have power over, they'll immediately kind of be like cowards. They'll, they'll shy yeah. away or they'll take it. Mango. Mango. Is the door closed? Is that why? Mango. Oh. <laughs> she was just being dramatic. She could have come down the whole time. Mingo. Are you Mingo. okay? Mingo. She probably forgot we were down here. She's just strutting through. Basically, I think they are the type that aren't really... Let me rephrase. It seems like the parents really just are local bullies then. Yeah. They like to wield their little minuscule amount of preconceived power over someone else that they feel are weaker and in front of actual I guess authority or anyone like that they're too afraid to even say a peep and they're letting OP just say this whole thing they're afraid to say a peep because they know they're wrong I don't think they think they're wrong I think they're just doing that because the cops are here but they don't have any shame they just stood there looking like fish out of water. So I continued ranting and asked them what in God's name made them think they were such good parents after all of that my father was beat red, but more from embarrassment than anger this time. And my mother was crying that she was a horrible person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad there's some... Uh, she might not mean it, but I'm, I'm glad she said it. I bluntly agreed that she is a horrible person. They all are. My mother buried her face in my brother's, in my father's jacket to cry, and my father looked more defeated than I'd ever seen him. Dan and his family avoided me entirely as they finished putting everything back into the moving truck. I made sure nothing of mine was stolen. Not that I'd had a chance to get much furniture yet. I was lucky to even have a couch at that time. They all got back in their vehicles and sister-in-law just stood staring at me with malice until my brother finally got her to drive the minivan home. And as soon as they were all gone, I got back online again and spilled the beans what happened. My parents were too embarrassed to even try and defend their actions this time. And while the family was somewhat split before this incident, it was now a landslide in my favor. Nearly all of the family has sided with me after this incident. And those who haven't simply are siding with any, aren't siding with anybody. No matter how much my parents previously tried the, we did it for Dan line, no one listened anymore. So any remaining familial support they had is now gone. Many in the family who I expected wouldn't side with me did. That includes the former flying monkeys. Hope he's winning. Justice has been served. Well, actually, okay, not yet, but at least the... It's heading there. Yeah, social internet version of justice has been served. So I guess they finally had enough. 
Around that time, I offered to host half the family at the next Christmas Eve in my house. My parents were not invited. Oh, that's a flex. Yeah. That's a flex. Come over to my place. I own it. <laughs> <laughs> it's my place. I wasn't blocked on brother and sister-in-law's profiles, surprisingly, and I saw sister-in-law had her fourth baby in early November. They are still living with my parents. I'm pretty sure they knew I was watching because sister-in-law kept making passive-aggressive posts every couple of weeks or so about not having enough space while living with my parents, probably to see if she can still guilt me, and I'm sure it's driving my mother and father up the wall because they aren't getting any peace and quiet in their old age with three rowdy, obnoxious kids a mentally unstable sister-in-law, my golden child brother, and a newborn baby in the house all at once. Perhaps they could move into a camper of their own backyard and let Dan take over the house completely. They might get some peace then. Yeah, they could do that for Dan. That's what we said. That was such a good clap back. <laughs> there was supposed to be more, but this post got way too long, so I'll post a part three. So that was the end of part two of this saga of gaslighting entitlement delulu juice like <sighs> craziness it's crazy yeah i this one's so much more hopeful it is although i'm, I'm glad op <laughs> didn't cave in to mm. the whole like do it for dan fiasco that they're trying to pull i i feel like that's the only reason for all of their weird antics yeah. Oh, you know what? What's the lesson to be learned here, though? What is it? In this digital day and age, you record everything. You keep everything, know everything as a evidence. I like the OP, not just verbally defend himself, but took action. Yeah. I'm actually really glad that OP posted on Facebook. I know a lot of people say you shouldn't air dirty laundry, but in this case... He needed to do it before they did it because otherwise the family was going to get a different version of the story that was in Dan's favor. And it seems like OP won't be alone, at least, because there are other family members that he still wants to keep in touch with, yeah. even if not his immediate one. I mean, he likes them enough to host them for Christmas yeah. Eve. I like that flex, though. Yeah. Come over to my place. Ugh. My place. Minus those people. Yeah. Yeah. So, Comet says, Dan is a real family man. He lives with his parents because he cannot afford to live independently with his wife and the four kids they've created. Dan and sister-in-law are complete losers and a burden to society. OP and observation. They don't think they are horrible. Your value to them is what you'll provide to benefit them. Get Dan and gang a home. Their outrage is your refusal. How dare you not serve our demands? Who do you think you are thinking about yourself and not Dan? This is not entitlement. This is toxicity. It is beyond toxicity. They truly thought you would cave and you didn't. Part three, you deserve some peace. A do not trespass order something. You know, I wish OP peace too. I wish him peace because his, his immediate family, they live in this Dan's world and they revolve only around the son called Dan. I, what is so special about Dan that his parents are like, it's not even rose-colored glasses. It's They're holding him on such a high pedestal, but I don't know what he's done for them, for, for them to treat him like that. All right. I have two running theories. Actually, three. Theory one, Dan hypnotized the parents as kids. <laughs> theory two, Opie's adopted, or, or there's some or mistress baby, or illegitimate child. Yeah, or that's something. my theory. Or theory three, they're just delusional and there is no explanation. There's no logical reasoning. I feel, I mean, at first I thought maybe OP is adopted, but these people don't sound like they have reason for anything besides do it for Dan. Like that is the model of tagline. which they live by. Yeah. Are you ready for part three, guys? Yes. Let's go. I'm hoping more justice gets served here. Okay. So this is the final part to the saga of Do It For Dan. I feel like we're sitting through one of those three-part movies where the ending is going to be this huge finale. This is a trilogy. <laughs> my parents, brother, and sister-in-law showed up to Christmas at my house when they knew they were unwelcomed. No. I was trying to keep things to two posts, but I realized while 
compiling everything that part two was just too damn long. So I've divided it to part three. For those who commented um, in a mass to get cameras, I will when I can afford it. I'm still in financial recovery from buying a house last year. Understandable. And as far as I know, good cameras need a decent computer to record to. And I don't have anything more than a three-year-old laptop that runs Windows 10. Yes, I am aware of doorbell cams. That will be the first kind I get. For those who keep saying that I should have just gotten my brother and sister-in-law arrested, the only reason I didn't was because they are parents. Their kids need them, and if Dan was arrested, he'd likely lose his job, and without that, his family has no money. And sister-in-law has only months-old baby right now. Neither of them need to end up in jail, but you don't need jail for revenge. Police can help, yes, but I got payback without filing a police report. Would I be this merciful again? More than likely not. And they know it. I think he's too nice. I see where he's coming from. He's kind of picking his battles. I get it. I don't know that I agree, but I get it. I mean, most likely if they ended up in, you know, prison or arrested, custody would most likely go to the grandparents, I'm thinking. Or next of kin, right? Grandparents. Yeah, but they lose the income that supported them. Well, I guess they all have to start working again. There you go. I decided to wait on making an account and posting until after the new year, just in case more stuff happened, and it did. As previous readers know, my sister-in-law was making passive-aggressive posts on social media that were obviously directed at me, especially after sister-in-law had her fourth baby in November. She was posting the same repetitive nonsense over and over again. She just found semi-clever ways of rewarding it, but she pretty much kept re regurgitating that she was tired of living with my parents that there isn't enough space she needs her own house blah 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 i know i sound dismissive but live through what i have with these people and you'd be ready to sarcastically play tiny violins in front of them too they're just that bad <laughs> and since i waited until january to make an account more happened just like i thought I stated before that I'd invited half my family for a Christmas Eve party at my house and everyone I invited all came, even though it was fairly long drive of around three to four hours for them. But they wanted to come and show me their support. I was praised by them a lot for how hard I've worked to get a house on my own and that they were sorry for everything I went through. I was asked why I didn't just take my camper and drive the three hours back to them instead of living pretty much homeless for so long. And I had to sheepishly admit that I was very attached to living around here and I had my best employment opportunities in this area. My hometown doesn't have a lot of great opportunities in my field, if any at all, and I wanted to make my own way as much as I could. Well, he's a hard worker. Yeah. An answer they overall accepted. We moved on to having a rather nice party, the best I'd been in years. Some relatives even brought CDs of great Christmas albums, and I have to say, the one that one of my uncle brought of Ray Charles was my favorite. He sings Christmas songs like no one else I've heard. It was a grand and happy time. I felt like for once, I could just forget my past issues and enjoy the moment, but I wouldn't be writing this if it had stayed that way. Wait, wait, before you even get to the juicy part that I can sense coming, random flashback, but... I haven't heard of anyone bringing over CDs in such a long time. That's true. I'm surprised. I mean, I guess they are older relatives, so I can see how they brought CDs. Yeah. But I'm surprised OP even has a CD player. I feel like old Christmas CDs hit different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I it, it kind of gets me nostalgic. Actually, I'm excited for the holidays, even though we're in the middle <laughs> of summer. <laughs> so. Yeah. We should host like a Christmas party. <gasps> We should. We should. Oh, even though, even though it, it is summer, yeah, we're we're kind of gearing up for the winter. But facilities. like, I think as Opie just set the mood. It just yeah. sounds so like wholesome and warm and fun. About two hours into the party, you know who showed up? My parents, brother and sister in law, popped in, trying to look all smiles. They didn't even knock; just walked right in my front door like they were meant to be there. <sighs> Oh, please start There's, locking your doors. That, that's what I was about to say. This, this man clearly does not lock his doors or something. It's, it's too easy. Well, the first time they drilled it off. Okay, so maybe locking doesn't even help. Maybe you need like a whole caution tape chain up the front door. Yeah. I shut off the music and told them to leave immediately. They begged to stay and said they brought gifts. 
One of my uncles stood up and yelled at them before I got another chance to speak. And he said they don't deserve to be in my home or my life after the stuff they tried to pull months earlier. And he was backed up by several other relatives. Mind you, this guy is my mother's brother. And he used to love her to pieces until he found out about the stuff they went on. The stuff that went on between me and my parents. My grandparents, mother's parents, as old as they are, hurriedly got in between us and said to my parents that if they want to make amends with me, it's far too soon. And they've never been more disappointed in them than they were this past year. They hid in their favoritism for my brother from prying eyes for a long time. But no one was fooled anymore and they needed to make a serious effort to try and actually treat me like a son if they ever wanted to be in my life again. Then they turned to Dan and sister-in-law and said they've seen the repetitive nonsense sister-in-law keeps posting about. They're tired of it and to just let it go already. My house will not become their new home. Oh my goodness. MVP has come out and it is the uncle. Thank you for taking the step forward to call that BS out. Oh my gosh. The uncle is OP's mom's brother. That's where, I think that's the kind of support that OP needed this whole entire time. I was a little bit worried because usually in stories like this, extended family, everyone wants to take a side. And usually, even if they do take your side, Mm -hmm. I don't know that how many people are willing to, you know, in front of a group of people, in front of all family members and say, no. You know, like, I think with family gatherings, (sighs) most family, they don't want to ruin the moment or ruin the... Mess up the mood, yeah. Yeah, ruin the mood. So I'm surprised that OP's uncle and grandparents stood up to his family instead of just letting it slide. It's nice to see not everyone's like that in the family. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. I'm just... Because OP's grandparents are like, you know, they're elderly and they're here for a good time. And now they just have to lecture their daughter. That's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. But I'm glad they did it. It was yeah. much needed. Um, oh, here we go. Sister-in-law went back to her old standard of crying and had a pity party about how she should be the one living here and not me. She plopped down in a chair to have a tantrum and say it wasn't fair. First of all, sister-in-law, get out of my chair. Who are you? You know that... What is that scene from a movie? Is it is it Mean Girls? Where there's a line that someone says to like a random student. You don't even go here. You don't even live here. Yes, for her. She doesn't even live here. She's not even... I mean, if you don't factor in the... the I guess she happened to marry his brother. But she and him are strangers. She and OP are strangers. Are they not? Yeah. And... OP was disowned by the family, so... Strangers. They are Who strangers. Are she plopped down in a chair to have a tantrum and say it wasn't fair I got this house to myself when I have no family of my own and she has four kids that need more space. You and- spawned them. Take credit. And she just wanted a better place to live in and feel like a real mom. Because you're only a real mom if you have a nice house to do it in, to to be a mother in? It was petty of me, but I loudly pointed out that she sucks as a mother because she lets my mother do most of the parenting while she sits on her butt all day drinking, playing on her phone, or going out and spending all of Dan's money. And she has the nerve to complain about it. I even joke that I'm surprised her baby doesn't get drunk from the breast milk since she (laughs) drinks so much booze. That is so (laughs) terrible. I mean, OP, if, if he ever considers like a side gig or a, another job or picking up a hobby, I think he'd be really, really good at writing um, witty, I don't know, witty short stories or being co- um, copywriting, maybe writing copyright. He seems pretty good. I don't know. I must feel kind of cathartic for him to have this out in the open because I know that if I was going through all of this there's no way I could keep it all to myself I need to let people know it's I, just, I'm impressed yeah OP impresses me which I admit went too far as I got some stares and sister-in-law demanded to know if I was calling her a bad mom I said the evidence speaks for itself 
And if she wanted to be able to afford to move out of my parents' house someday, then she needs to put her college degree to some use, get a job, and learn to save money. My mother already does most of the child care for my brother's kids anyway, so she'd have plenty of time after her baby gets a little older. My brother's eldest kid, who's seven years old, ran up to start kicking and screaming at me for yelling at his mom, and he kept at me about how his mom said I was the bad guy who made her cry and didn't let them live here. Aha. It's already like she already planted a seed in her kids' minds. I mean, OP was right. The evidence speaks for itself. That's a live demonstration of her parenting yes. style. So, yeah, you could tell her she sucks as a mom. That poor kid, though. Like, they don't, right now, they don't know what's right or wrong. So they're just listening to everything their parents say and they'll repeat it. And that's how they're, they're going to walk through life. Yeah. Uh, I hope it changes for them. That's when my brother grabbed his son to pull him away. But all the other relatives jumped back in and this sort of turned into a family intervention against my sister-in-law and brother. She was crying. Her new baby was crying. Her kids were crying. Hell, even Dan was very, very nearly in tears from the verbal lashing he was being assaulted with. Yeah. <laughs> I don't feel bad. <laughs> he ended up just sitting on the ottoman. Again, get off my ottoman. The pettiness in me would say, can you get off my chair, please? And then get a little spray bottle and start wiping it down. Be like, mm. you just, so, just you let me remove traces of you from here. You must disinfect this, this area. He ended up just sitting on the ottoman. I keep shoes in by the door and looking like a complete wreck. He couldn't look anyone in the eye. He couldn't even say two words to me, not with a whole house filled with angry people ready to judge him if he tried to let out his inner golden child again. If they weren't there to get in his way, I bet this would have ended up on repeat. Ended up a repeat of which he tried to order me around to try and take my house months earlier. By this point, though, he'd been so thoroughly humiliated that his and my parents' reputation in the family was completely destroyed because the masks were all off now. Soon after my parents, brother, and sister-in-law all left in defeat, the party resumed and we all avoided speaking of what just happened for the rest of the evening. I just imagine like, they're like, all right, guys, turn Jingle Bells Rock back on. <laughs> they're like, Jingle Bells. Cue the music. <sighs> they're, they're like, the Grinch, the Grinch, the Grinch really just showed up. Ugh. Hey, don't say a bad name on the Grinch. I like the Grinch. You he like turns, the Grinch? Well, he turns good at the end. So oh. in this case, there's... Maybe I didn't watch the movie till the end. No! <laughs> Spoiler! Did I just spoil it for you? <laughs> Since most of the adults had been drinking, everyone stayed the night in my house. I even let some of them sleep in the camper so there'd be enough space. I admit it also makes a good guest house. My relatives all wanted a tour of it earlier as well. And they said they couldn't believe I'd been living in it for around two years. Oh. Two years in the camper? I think this is the first time OP has dropped the time period. Because yeah. he said a while. He didn't say how long. Mm -hmm. That's dedication. Driving around for two years? Dedication. I would not be able to do it. I got a lot of questions about it. Like what summer and winter was like and so on. I was up earlier than everyone else Christmas morning and had a fresh pot of coffee and some ibuprofen for those spiked eggnog hangovers a few of them had. I was complimented on being a way nicer host than my parents ever were. I bet. <laughs> and we all agreed to do this again next Christmas. Oh, this is so wholesome. This sounds like a Christmas movie. Yeah. Oh. After Christmas... Sister-in-law did finally stop making posts that were obvious digs at me and deleted all of the older ones as well. But shortly after the new year, she more recently made a new post complaining about how she tried to convince my parents to get a camper like I did so it could be <gasps> set up in the backyard so Dan and his family could use the whole house as their family home. Well, a taste of one's own medicine is never fun. I love it. I love the. You know what I think? The sister-in-law is karma to the parents for what they did to op i like to think that yeah scary though i mean if that's the case it's scary how karma works mm. no one is going to push them out of their own home let alone their master bedroom huh. the <laughs> that's funny no one's gonna push them out of their own home 
The okay. post was only up for a couple of days before sister-in-law removed it, and she has hardly posted anything since then. She loves to complain, but if a tree falls and no one is around to hear it, can it still complain? Sister-in-law, I guess, has realized there's no point in doing it when no one hears it her anymore. And Dan can't afford to move his family out of his, out on his salary alone anytime soon. If they end up expecting another child in the next few years, I won't be surprised. Please stop making please. offspring, please. <laughs> <laughs> like, please stop spawning your seed, please. It's- Things mellowed down for me since then, and I've even invited friends over for a poker night. I suck at poker because I can never remember a damn thing about it. But so what? We get to drink beer and eat junk food while being merry idiots. We all loaded up on Whoppers from Burger King and just had at at it the best way four grown men can when they just want to have a good unadulterated time and get pissed drunk. I think maybe around summer, I'll look into possibly dating someone. I'm not exactly getting younger here. Fingers crossed that goes well. My camper just sits idle in my yard now. And I admit there were some days I went out there just to spend time in it. Aww. No. It's like his tree house. Except on the ground. <laughs> on the ground. In, on wheels. I, I mean, I like that he kept it. I mean, it's probably nostalgic. And he did say it makes a good guest it house. It was his house for a few yeah. years, too. And I admit there were some days I went out there just to spend time in it. I did live in it for two years. It's like my second home. And maybe one day I'll actually get used to it. I'll get to use it for camping like it was meant to be. I've never been camping. My parents considered it a waste of time. So it'd be a completely new experience for me. This pretty much marks the end of what happened. My parents, brother, and sister-in-law have all been staying very clear of me. In fact, they seem to have gone back to acting like I don't exist, like they did before I bought a house. Not like that bothers me at all. It's better that way, but they'll inevitably come back in some way. I know they will. I just wonder what kind of stupid thing they'll do next. If anything notable like this ever happens again, I'll make another post if this account is still active. And that's the end of this do it for Dan saga. <laughs> the do it for Dan. The do it for Dan saga. You know what? That that last, uh, I guess, statement OP mentions how maybe he'll try camping since that's something his parents weren't or dismissed as a waste of time. Yeah. I wonder how many other experiences OP missed out on because his parents or Dan never wanted to do anything. So he was completely shut down. I wonder if OP ever got like a proper birthday party or Aww. proper anything priority graduation. Like think, any celebration moment for him. Yeah. He did mention earlier that they didn't attend his graduation. So I doubt they did anything for him. They might have done it for appearances. If they invited people over, they might have done it like, oh, well, relatives might have said, hmm, when is OP's birthday party since you had one for Dan? And then the parents probably would be well, pressured. In part one, Opie mentioned that's why they moved yeah. three hours away from relatives. Ah, it's because to avoid his the parents, judgment. they were tired of keeping up appearances. Of treating him equal like they should. I wonder if Dan has favoritism towards his kids. The way that the parents did. Oh my goodness. Right? That would be awful. I bet Dan has a golden child of his own. You know who the golden child is in Dan's family? It's sister in law. <laughs> His wife. She gets She's out everything. here throwing tantrums. I just imagine her like a grown woman just plopping down on the chair and just hands and feet like, like flying swinging? in the air. Yeah, yeah, like the little swinging. Motion. Yeah. Just crying like, this should be mine. This should, I should be the one living here, not you, while sitting on OP's chair. The Lulu. She's yeah. been drinking that Delulu juice. So we're going to fin- finish off with some comments. <laughs> Comment says, next time you win a $2 lottery ticket, post on your social media that you won the lottery. Heh. <laughs> Just heh, dot, dot, dot. I, I love that. But then I would also fear for OP's life and peace of mind. Yeah. Comment- because you know they would come knocking. The comment replies, funny, but I don't think it will be worth the headache. Exactly. Um, comment says, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of your extended family. You absolutely can't pick who you were born to, but you can pick who's important 
and who you spend your time with. Between your extended family, your friends, and a possible future romantic relationship, I hope the rest of your days are full of joy and peace. Coming from an abusive family, I know how difficult it is to set boundaries and stand by them. You've done a phenomenal job. You've made a phenomenal life for yourself, OP. Good job, OP. I think that's a good ending. A yeah. good comment to end on. That's so nice. It's It really is like a Christmas movie. Like a Hallmark ending. Yeah. Because usually movie endings are like you're with your family, right? Yeah. But in this case, OP's family is... Extended family? Yeah. Because OP's immediate family is yeah. not the heartwarming, like, group that you want to be around at all. No. Victims so, w- wanting to play... Wait, no. Villains wanting to play victim. Yeah. So when I first brought up the story to V, I told her that it was going to be long. <laughs> what What did you feel about that? Do you think that this was too long? Well, we've had some long stories before. So I was thinking it would be, okay, something with a long update maybe. But this one had three, three part story to it. So I wasn't expecting that. But I told Sandra, you know what? You chose it. I trust your judgment. We're going to run with it. I think when I came across the story, I just thought that it was so bizarre and unhinged. Especially sister-in-law who tried manipulating OP, manipulated his whole family, tried to manipulate the relatives with her post. And I think once in a while hearing a story about that kind of kind of sets you back your feet back on the ground. Like, I am not that. I am we're doing okay. <laughs> like wh- whatever's happening right now, I it, at least I don't have sister in law in my life. You know, they make my life seem like a very boring like documentary series because I have no one ba- barging down changing the locks to my own home and moving in so yeah I mean they set the bar I wonder what, up the, there. what would have happened if the cops didn't come like if OP didn't call the cops because it sounded like OP was very hesitant about getting anything legal involved if the cops weren't there I think things would have been really much worse physically yeah. Because oh, it was already yeah. starting to become, you know, the brother getting in his face, voicing those threats. And sister in law threatened to key his camper. And actually hitting him. Yeah. Yeah. And the parents just did nothing. I hope that OP's days are filled with peace and no more drama. I think he had enough drama for a lifetime. Yeah. No more drama. And I hope he finds that special someone, hopefully, in the future. Mm. And enjoy that refrigerator with uh, your cold food. That you don't have to plug into someone's random house on the street anymore. Yes. I can't believe his parents wouldn't even let him plug it into their house. No. We'll have to charge you rent for that. It's an eyesore. I love how they got a, a taste of their own juice. It's so satisfying. Yeah. Because they really were telling OP to give up his whole house. And then now when sister-in-law re- played the Uno reverse card on them, they're like, we're not giving up our house. We're not giving up our master bedroom. But that's exactly what you asked OP to give up. You know, where have we seen a clapback at their own game the way OP does? Everything they say, he throws it back at them. Everything they did is coming back to them. I like it. Yeah, it's very nice. Oh my goodness. So I'm so happy and we're so happy that OP has a good ending. Yeah, yeah. I think, really I, I think this is yeah. a good ending. And we can't he- wait to hear more about his romantic relationship if he does post again on this account. If you guys come across another update, let us know in the comments below. And if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like button, guys. And subscribe. Help us reach 5K. Ooh. Oh, although if you're listening to us on Spotify, don't forget to like this episode. Read us five stars. Five stars only. Okay. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>